Hello friends and welcome. Today I want to talk through a very common mistake that happens. In fact, it's so common that I have a video from a year and a half ago which covers pretty much the exact same topic, but this time we will uh, add a bit more detail to it. And I really want to walk through this with you um, because a lot of you report to me like having trouble making decisions in games. Like, I don't know like what we should be doing. So we're really gonna talk through it, try to add in as much detail as possible so you guys can uh, reach these conclusions in your own games. So we're gonna be talking from the dire perspective right now. Let's actually switch to just their view. And I was showing their items, you know, pause if you wanna look through it. Um, here's like the net worth, Roche timer. I'll like flip through all the heroes real quick if you wanna see like their, their abilities and item cooldowns, stuff like that but I'll talk through some of this with you. And then I want you guys to like come up with uh, what you think should happen in some of these. So right now, Dyer's pretty behind. They're defending their high ground. Uh, Radiant had Aegis, but they lost a little bit earlier. That's why some cooldowns are down. Some heroes are dead, as you can see. So uh, coming up here as a Dyer, you know, what should you do? How do you get out of this situation? And how do you start clawing your way back into the game now that you're 12K behind? So you can see them pinging their triangle and they're gonna start moving into here. So first question, let me ask you guys, is this a good idea for the Dire team? The answer has actually already shown itself a little bit uh, a few seconds ago. Luna is up here. She was down here, now she's up here. There's no physical way to walk that far in that amount of time, which tells me that Luna teleported. Luna, who has 17K net worth, and if you take that out of this 12K advantage, they're actually 5K behind because now there's only four heroes here. It doesn't matter how many heroes are here or not. I have no information because we've lost a lot of our, our vision because we're the losing team. But from the vision I got from the lanes, which is that Luna suddenly showed up here when I last saw her here, 100% guaranteed four heroes maximum in this area. That's how I know as the Dyer, I can now safely move into here. I mean, it might be a fight if there's four heroes here. And I guess it depends how far behind you are. Like maybe you still lose to a, a 5v4, in which case, I don't know, you're really behind. Then you need to see more heroes. In this case, it's not so far behind that they can't take this fight. So moving up here is the correct decision. Although they're a little scattered. They should probably be a little bit more together before coming up here. But surprise, surprise, they do get up here and they take a pretty decent fight. We'll start slowing it down again here. Uh, they go for this puck. Puck barely gets out. So, pop quiz again. What should you do as the dire? How do you start coming back from this 10K disadvantage? You can pause here if you wanna think about it, um, but I will now just start telling you my thoughts. So when you're this behind in a game, and in the game you don't know you're like 10K behind, but you probably have a feeling, right? They have most of your towers. They've been kind of dictating the pace of the game you need to avoid full-on five-on-five fights. Even though you have like some good heroes for it, like Warlock, if the enemy team's ahead and they bring their full net worth and XP advantage against your net worth and XP, like they tend to come out ahead. So we don't want any like five-on-five -five direct fights. We want smaller fights where we bring more numbers or we take very advantageous fights in good positions. For example, maybe it is a five-on-five -five fight, but we have the advantage of our tier three high ground, right? We need as many advantages as we can get. So we need good vision to do that. So after you kill these two heroes, one of the most important things to do right now, okay, actually first, the most important thing to do would be Roshan if it were up, but it was killed earlier. So that's actually not a concern for us right now. If it was up, this is probably priority number one, just like bolt over here and try to do this. Uh, if they buy back, then you like fall off a little bit. Because it's down, we move on to the next uh, objective, which is map control. We need vision right now. It would be a big mistake to spend a lot of this time on our own half of the map right now, because guess what? Like I said, earlier when we knew Luna was up here, I can't possibly run into five heroes, right? Two heroes are dead, which means I cannot possibly run into five enemy heroes if I play on the enemy's half of the map. So as a team, we need to come to the enemy's half of the map for their farm, and to de-ward and put our own wards so that we can start getting vision. Because right now the map's so dark, we got enough information off of Luna TPing here, but what if she didn't show there? What if she TPed in here and was jungling? Then I don't really know and I'm stuck in my base waiting and Luna's getting more farm and they're farming here. And I don't have enough information to make an educated guess at a play. So we need any kind of deep vision we can get to see the enemy start to split up and then I know where I can move, whether I have to dodge top or move in the bottom. That is super important right now. As a support player, if you're watching this, keep that in mind. Like any vision you need to do right now, 
this is not time to like put your own defensive wards on your own half of the map. You need at least one, if not more, deep wards to see when the enemy is scattered because this is the only time you can come over here. If the enemies are up, you're stuck on your own half of the map and that's when you can place defensive wards. This is a rare opportunity where you killed them, the team ahead, so you need to place vision on their half of the map. For the rest of the team, you also need to uh, look to like steal the jungle camps, push in the lane, stuff like that. So what the Dyer ends up doing though, is they do come mid to try to shove it out. They bring too many heroes, it's really unnecessary. Dawnbreaker still has Earl, Dawnbreaker can do this alone, or Dawnbreaker can push out bottom while the rest of them start doing things. Um, because aside from map control, there's one other um, thing you could attempt to do depending on the game. This smoke right here, why would you smoke? You smoke if you think you can kill a hero or like you're, you're going to try to kill a hero. So for example, Luna, right? I want to kill Luna. That's why I'm smoking right now because they're dead for 40 seconds earlier. Now we've lost some time. Now it's 20 seconds. It's getting a little scary. Um, but if I wanted to try to kill Luna, I don't have time to like deward at everything and then find her, right? As soon as she sees us, she's going to start getting out or she should. This is ancient, by the way. I don't know if I said that. Um, so in that case, we would smoke to really try to up the tempo. And it would happen over here when Puck got away, right? That would be like a smoke and go and try to kill that Puck or Luna. Where's Luna? It's pretty dark on this map. We saw her top and we know she teleported up here. She has to be in this part of the map. And the longer it takes us to get there, the further and further it gets to be like a complete guess. It's completely uncertain to me where she is. Now, if you come into this triangle looking for her and you don't find her, that's not too bad because I said you need vision on the enemy's half of the map. I don't really care if it's top or bottom right now because Roshan's dead. Ultimately, top would be a little better um, because eventually Roche will respawn and I, I want vision up here. But for now, it's kind of far enough away where like if you put vision down here, that's still useful for Roche because you can see when enemies are down here and then you know to like go into Roche or something. Um, so as long as it's vision on the enemy's half of the map, I don't care. That's why if you smoke for Luna and come up here and place wards up here instead of down here, that's fine. It's taken a little bit though. So even though I know Luna's top, like I don't really know where and it's kind of iffy. They end up running into their own, or not their own, into the bottom jungle. And I'm gonna tell you guys, this is actually unnecessary because they were dead. And I don't think anyone's down here, right? Five heroes were here and we lost the team fight. We're, we're talking from the rating perspective now. Should I continue to farm in this part of the map? No, this is a pretty bad idea when there's five alive enemy heroes right over here. Everyone should be evacuating this bottom part of the map. So whether you smoke or not, you really shouldn't find anyone here. Because we don't plan to find anyone here and our main objective is to establish vision, I don't even need to use a smoke. I will just walk into here. I don't care if they see me walk into here because I am going to deward before I place any of my own wards. So I have enough sentries to check some common areas. I have a Zeus to help me out. So I will check for common spots and then remove any vision, and then maybe they know I ward down here, but they don't know exactly where, and I'm gonna place it in weird spots. I'm not just gonna place it on the cliffs. I'm putting it in weird spots so that the wards survive. So I don't need to smoke at all for that. I only need to smoke if I'm trying to kill someone and I have to walk through vision. I don't know where their vision is, right? But I have to walk through here. I think there might be wards, and if they see me at all, like whoever I'm going for is going to be out of there. So we need the movement speed and the like, hidden aspect of the smoke of deceit to go for kills. If we're just looking for map control, we don't need to smoke. We can save it for later when we see them split up from the deep wards we placed. Speaking of which, this ward right here by Warlock, you don't want to place this one right now because this is your few chances to like really enter the enemy territory as we talked about. And uh, like you can place this when they're all up and just like, I do this on stream sometimes, right? I just like scream as I run down here and then run back. And like I run down here and I run back. It's a risk, but it's like, it's a lower end risk. So you can kind of place this whenever, but placing these deep wards, like way back here, back here, in here, here, like that kind of stuff, that's harder to do. Uh, you really, you can only do it like at times like this when you have your team to back you up. And even if the team wasn't here, like I kind of know they're not down here, right? Um, Luna's top, Puck's probably running away low health. So Omni Knight maybe, but as a support, I don't really care. I'll just go in, who cares, right? So they come in here and I think up to here is kind of okay. Like. 
They smoked, which I don't think they need to. But honestly, in your pubs, I know smokes are underused anyway. So if you smoke for this, whatever, I don't care. Smoke for it, that's fine. The issue is, because they smoked, they feel they need to keep going until they find someone. And that is not the case. And in fact, specifically right now, I definitely don't want that to happen. Why? Our objective was map control. It was to get um, like the enemy's farm so that we can start covering, coming back in net worth and get like our lanes pushed in. It was to get these deep wards down. And we've, we started to do that. We have the deep wards. We now spend this time to farm. And then like, as they respawn and they try to fight us, we don't really want a five on five fight because we're behind and we don't have all our spells. So we like fall back and we farm like our half of the map as we retreat. And you're very happy because as they chase you, they're running through like no farm at all. And so that's how you pull up ahead. If they move into this top half of the map, then you're kind of like, okay, because you're behind and they're just ignoring you and you're all farming. Like, oh, okay. Like, I'm pretty happy with that, actually. So they kind of have to go towards you and then you fall back. If they continue to go, what kind of fight are they going to find? Even if these heroes aren't dead, which they're about to respawn so they can be anywhere, right, with the teleports. But even if they weren't dead and they were alive, let me tell you that based on what's happened, this is a, a five on five coming up here. How do I know that? Because we started here and we smoked into here. I didn't find anyone. So there's no enemy heroes here and there's no enemy heroes here. That means, uh, yeah, they could be in like weird parts of the corners of the map. But uh, for now, like we can just assume like there's no one on the bottom half of the map, which means they're all in the top half of the map. Now, are they in our jungle or this jungle? I'm not fully sure. Sometimes we have defensive wards, which is actually in the video I made a year and a half ago. Um, they knew no one was in here because they had defensive wards. In this case, because the lane is here, this tells me that it's unlikely anyone is top. Because if someone were still top, they should really be pushing this in because that's where the enemy was. And then they should get out. You know, So if Luna was still up here, she would have sent her Manta Illusions to deal with this. If she's trying to play it safe, which I think she should because she TP'd up here, right? That would be why she can't push this. And if she can't push this, and there's no one else up here to push this, then I'm just going to assume there's no one in our jungle. And whether that assumption is correct or not, the fact is, is that there's a lot telling me there's, uh, there's a lot of heroes here because I didn't find them anywhere else. And if I walk into here as the Dire, the team that is behind and does not have all their spells, into a disadvantaged spot because we're pushing into the high ground, I have no vision here. I don't know if the enemy has vision here. I'm near their towers. This is not going to go well for me. And guess what? Surprise, surprise. We jump the Luna as heroes are respawning. Hey, where's that Puck who's going to coil us now? Oh, I didn't see him. That's wild. Hey, where's that Guardian Angel coming from? I don't know. I can't even see. Oh, there he is, right? Up here on the high ground. Well, we're down here fighting in the low ground, which is almost unavoidable because we're coming from here into the high ground. It's so hard to take a fight, right? If you're going to blink blindly up here, you don't even know what you're going into. You just have to like YOLO take that risk. Otherwise, oh, we can place a ward first. That means your support has to be like right over here and then place a ward. If anyone's here, the support's dead first. And the support was supposed to be a backliner. So do you pass wards to the core who's going to walk up? They have no slots. It's too hard to like organize all this. It's so hard to walk up here when no one else, like no one else showed anywhere. There's five heroes here. We have to take this fight so carefully and it's not possible with the way things are going. We should just sit down here and be happy with what we got. And in fact, even stay here. As these heroes respawn, we're gonna keep an eye on the map and we're gonna see, are they pushing mid? Are they pushing top? Maybe then we can do something now that we see them split up, but we don't have that information right now. The enemy might scatter. They might walk into here into our wards. And then we know, hey, we can fight. We're on the high ground here. They're coming from the low ground. We have vision set up on this cliff. We're very happy to fight. I mean, there's no ward here, but it's like you could put one, you know? This is a much better situation. And you get to like farm in the meantime. And if they don't engage you, again, you're happy because you're the losing team. You're behind. You don't even have all your spells. You don't want to fight. This is the most common mistake I was talking about. Where because you smoke, you feel like you got to keep going until you find someone. And like you start here, right? Maybe even start on your base. You go here, you go here, and you're like, I can't find anyone. Let's keep going. Just stop, guys. Be happy with what you found. If you moved all the way through here with the smoke and didn't find anyone, this whole half of the map, that's gold. That's XP. Farm it on your way out. 
Now, of course, Dota is very complex, so maybe there are cases where you should keep going. Um, as a general rule, those situations are when you're the team that's way ahead and you don't really care where the fight happens because you're so ahead. You just want fights and you'll win fights. It doesn't even matter if you smoke in that case. I mean, it's still good, but like, if it doesn't matter that if they see you coming because you're so ahead, then like, yeah, you can run through here, but you're also probably like, you don't even need to smoke. You're not that worried about taking five on five fights. So it's like, it's a pretty different situation. Most games are not that clear cut where you're winning that badly. Uh, you have to take like safer fights, all of that. And so uh, hopefully what we talk to is something you've probably experienced where you end up pushing too far. And then like you keep going and going until you force yourself into a five on five situation, which you really should not be doing. Just because you can surprise them with a five on five does not mean that the five on five was actually good to take. And that is very frequently what happens here. It's always, it's like right here where they cross over to the other side and then you lose. Or like on this side, you like run over here and then you cross over here. Or it can, I mean, it can even go the other way. It doesn't really matter if you like smoke into here and then you like come looking for them in the jungle. It's a little easier because this bottom part is like more scattered. It's particularly dangerous in the triangle because it's so small that there's a higher chance all five heroes are here, like very close together. Whereas if you like do the reverse smoke, smoke into here and then move down here, there's a bigger chance they're more scattered just because there's a like a bigger surface area of the map here. So if you're going in the opposite direction, it's kind of more okay, but you should still be really careful of it because any ward here is like incredible to fight around if you're the team up here, but it's a little easier. But going from this direction into this direction is extremely dangerous and frequently leads to uh, game losing fights like this where you get team wiped and even though you had a chance, you kind of just lose from there. Or maybe you were uh, winning and then you threw the game because the, t the losing team, you know, took such a good fight around here. So hopefully that helped you guys understand why you uh, should not do that in most situations. Again, Dota's complex. There might be cases for it. But you should really be able to lay out a lot of those reasons to me to tell me, this is why, Zach, it was safe for us to do that. And then I'm like, I'm on board. But if if your logic comes down to like, we were smoked, we're supposed to find someone, right? Then it's not a good enough reason. And you really probably should stop somewhere around here. Or if you're going the other way, stop somewhere around here and just be happy with what you did. This is very impactful. Like these wards down here and farming this and retreating, that is a very good thing. Don't underestimate that. Be okay with getting that from your smokes if you don't find someone and don't push it too far and then just like throw away everything you accomplished. That is it. Hope you found that helpful. Uh, we'll keep trying to do these kind of like decision-making talk-throughs to uh, help you all with that because I know Dota is like tough to figure out what to do. Um, but uh, hopefully from this, you understand like why map awareness is so important, right? Some of these were only obvious because we saw like brief flashes of information like Luna showing top. And then also by reading the map, understanding like where the enemies are likely to be so we know where to go and what we can possibly accomplish in those different areas. So that's it. Thank you. I'll see you in the next video.